Hi, this is Geese with Alien Drones. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Always appreciate it. So today I wanted to go through something quick uh, that just came out. The FAA came out with some new regulations that are going to govern how recreational pilots can fly. Now this is separate from the Part 107 licensing, and this is something brand new. And most of it's not that big of a deal. However, some of it is kind of a pain. So what I'm going to try to do is make this kind of cut and dry, just go through some of the detailed points where I think it needs maybe a little more explanation. But I'm going to try to keep this cut and dry so I don't ramble on here for an hour and bore you to death. So I'm going to get right into it here. And of course, I'll put all the information and links and things down in the uh, description here. So if you want more information or links to some of the things I talk about, don't forget to uh, look down there. And I will update those as anything happens because it is a fluid situation. So here we go. They came up with eight kind of uh, outlines or rules for the recreational pilot. Uh, so here they are. I'm just going to run down these and then I'll interject just a little more information where I think it uh, will help in there just uh, uh, hopefully kind of keep it uh, simple for you. So number one, aircraft is flown strictly for recreational purposes. Makes sense. Not commercial, not making money. Just going out there having fun, taking your pictures, your waterfall. Good to go. No explanation necessary. Number two, aircraft is authorized, operated in accordance with or within a programming of a community-based organization, which is a CBO, set of safety guidelines that are developed in coordination with the FAA. So this is simply the safety factor. What safety guidelines are you following? Do you have a plan and are you following them? What the FAA has done with this is they said, yeah, we like the CBO. We like that some community came up with guidelines. However, we know all we know much better and we're gonna come up with our own. So what they've done is said, in the meantime, before we come up with our own guidelines, you can follow the CBO in your area. There are accepted safety guidelines that have been around, but when we figure out the real ones, we'll let you know, and then you're gonna to have to follow our guidelines. So that is not available yet. They said they're gonna do that soon. And when that's available, I will update again, description and all that down here. So you'll know when that happens. But for now, just know that Number two here means you need to fly safe. And there's some basic guidelines that uh, kind of outline that. And that's not that much different from before. So in general, fly for recreational purposes only. Keep your unmanned aircraft within visual line of sight. Do not fly above 400 feet in any uncontrolled airspace. G airspace, which is uh, the uncontrolled. Do not fly in any controlled airspace without FAA authorization. Follow all FAA airspace restrictions, including special security, things like that. So if you've got a special thing going on or there's some event or parade or presidents coming to town, uh, make sure you follow those temporary restrictions as well. Never fly near other aircraft. Give way to other aircraft, manned or unmanned. Never fly over groups of people, public events and stadiums. Never fly near emergency response activities and never fly under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Again, nothing new really here. We've had these kind of uh, restrictions in place already for recreational and for part 107. So not really a big deal here. Uh, the next ones start to get a little bit more hairy. Number three, visual line of sight. No problems there. We always uh, do that whether you do it directly with the pilot in command or you actually have a visual observer keeping the UAV in the line of sight is something that's ongoing and is continuing. Number four, aircraft is operated in a manner that does not interfere and gives way to manned aircraft. No problem, don't fly into a plane, not good for anybody, not good for the manned or unmanned aircraft, just don't do it. Five, now this one uh, is a new one and uh, this is where I think they're reaching just a little because they're trying to, I think, merge the 107 and the recreational a little bit too much. The guy that got a, a drone for Christmas wants to go fly in the snow and take some pictures of the car in the driveway. I think uh, trying to come up with uh, the airspace designations and all the detail that comes with that, it might be a little bit much. I do understand you want to know where the airplanes are, you want to know what flight, you want to know what's in your area so you don't have a collision. I get it. But I think this is a little bit too much for most recreational pilots. I think probably by now, even some of you are probably glazing over just by hearing all these terms. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'll make this just a little bit easier. What they do recommend is going to a website that they have created, which I use, 
and it actually shows the different airspaces. So for right now, all you have to know is stay out of those airspaces. Just don't fly in them. However, I'm going to pull up this website quickly just so you can see kind of what it looks like because it is pretty cool and they do give you a lot of information that maybe you wouldn't see someplace else. So I'm going to pull that up here quick. All right, so this is the website uh, that is uh, the, from the FAA that actually designates all the different airports and airspaces, uh, restricted areas, things like that. And it's actually pretty neat. It actually does do a pretty good job at identifying the airport. So you can see there's actually quite a few of airports on here and you can see the different zones of each, different colors and such. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in here on the Denver area, basically just because it's kind of the middle of the country here and uh, be able to see what this looks like a little bit. So I'll get rid of this fella here. So what these are showing you here is these kind of little circles. You're familiar with those when they said before you couldn't fly five miles from an airport. That's what they're doing is have these radius around the airport. So no big deal there. That's uh, something that we're used to. But I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more here and you're going to see some things pop up. You're going to see numbers here around here, which is really cool because this is telling you the ceiling at which a UAV can actually fly. So you'll notice right towards the center of the airport, I'm going to zoom in right here on this big Denver airport. And you'll notice right here, here's the airport in here. You can see these big, all the runways and all this in here. It's kind of a little hard to see because it is uh, faded a little bit, but you can see the actual runways and stuff. If we zoom in far enough, you actually see everything going on in here. But as we zoom out, you'll see here's the whole area of this airport. Right close to the airport, of course, you can fly zero. There is just no fly in this whatsoever. As you get to some of these fringes, however, if you're in these areas, you'll notice here, I'm just going to click out here. Uh, you can see here, it says there's a ceiling for a UAV of 400 feet. So that's pretty much open for you. Now, you still have to be aware of airplanes in that area, but it actually tells you the ceiling is 400 feet. The little trick here is if you flip down in this, uh, this kind of took me a long time to figure out there was another page. This is a Class D airspace, so this definitely applies to a recreational pilot. So another thing to, to note is that there's more than just regular airport space on here. So you'll notice right in here, for instance, there's an area and you can see this little red one here. That's actually a restricted pace uh, a restricted airspace. Uh, DOD, Department of Defense, even though it's an airspace D, it's a restricted. You cannot fly in there whatsoever. So keep a lookout for those kinds of areas. OK, one more thing I'm going to show you, which is kind of cool, which you don't think about very much. And I did mention it. But I'm going to go underneath this little layer here. I'm going to turn on the special use because it's pretty, pretty interesting. So what happened here, you'll notice all of a sudden these different things popped up here, these little shades. These are different areas that, yes, you may be able to fly in, but you have to be really careful that you are using it, uh, flying in it appropriately because there may be restrictions or times or there might be reasons that you shouldn't uh, fly above certain altitudes, whatever. It's, it, they're alert areas. You'll notice here is a uh, airspace that's just special use. And if we flip down here, you'll know it's a little bit more academy. So it's telling you that there's training going on in this area. So when the training is going on, you have to be really careful. You don't know what the altitude is going to be. They're going to be flying in odd paths. So you want to be aware that this happens. Can you fly there? Yes, but you have to be careful. You have to be aware. So they're not letting you off the hook and saying, I'm just recreational. I'm just flying willy nilly. You actually have to pay attention a little bit, look at where you're flying. Here's another area, for instance. Here's a special use MOA, which stands for Military Operation Area. And you can see it's a, a MOA. Now that one you can fly in as well. You can see that it is a, a airspace, but you actually need to be careful uh, because there's gonna be military airplanes. They might be flying low, they might be doing different maneuvers, uh, might be uh, using instruments or not. So again, you just have to be aware that all these things exist. So that's really what they're trying to accomplish uh, with this section. And again, this, uh, this website is pretty slick, so I would uh, recommend that you actually take a little time, go look through this and uh, become familiar with uh, this website because it's going to help you a lot just kind of understand what actually uh, they're talking about as far as the different airspaces without getting too in-depth. So six is in Class G airspace, aircraft is flown from the surface to not exceed 400 feet above ground level. Now that's kind of what we knew already, that we shouldn't fly above 400 feet. Uh, as a recreational pilot. However, there were some kind of exceptions. I think it was a little gray, so they made it absolutely no, without a doubt. You cannot, not even next to a tower or a building, I don't believe. Uh, they're not perfectly clear on that. However, what I'm taking that as to be is there's no exceptions. Even if you're next to a building, I'm not so sure that you can go above it as a recreational 
Uh, maybe they figure if you're not recreational, you shouldn't be flying above a tower or a building. I don't know, but it says specifically not more. They don't give exceptions for anything else. So uh, with part 107, you can go above particular structures, uh, but it looks like, for at least for the meantime, unless I'm misunderstanding, that you can't do it recreationally. 400 feet is the maximum, even in uncontrolled airspace. Number seven, operator has passed an aeronautical knowledge and safety test and maintains proof of test passage to be made available to the administrator or designee of the administrator or law enforcement upon request. Now this is definitely a new one. And what it means is you're gonna have to take a test. They don't have the test done yet. They said they're gonna have it within 180 days, which I believe is going to be true. Likely if they're gonna do a test, they're gonna charge you for it. Hopefully it doesn't make you go to some testing center and pay hundreds of dollars, like the uh, part 107 is $150. That's a shame if some kid gets a, a, a UAV for Christmas and you're gonna make them take a test and, and pay that kind of money and then keep paying. It sounds like a money grab to me. Uh, I do understand uh, you have hunter safety, you have things like that. So I could see having something basic. Hopefully it's just an online thing, but we don't know. It's gonna be 180 days, six months which uh, puts that around uh, November something. Uh, so uh, hopefully, um, you know, it's gonna be a lot faster than that, we'll see. Uh, last but not least, aircraft is registered and marked. Proof of registration is made available to the administrator, of course. Uh, so that's nothing new either. You had to register all your uh, UAVs, uh, so that's not a new one for us as well. So really in a nutshell what i'm going to do here is i will put all those right together here and i'm just going to buzz through them real quick so we have a quick outline so if you want to bookmark this portion you'll see what all eight of these are that is one aircraft is flown for recreational purposes two it's uh, flown safely according to some guidelines three aircraft is flown to visual line of sight four operated in a manner that does not interfere and gives way to manned aircraft. B, C, D, air, airspace or E airspace. You're going to need to uh, get some authorization before you fly in those airspaces. In class G airspace, flown from the surface to not more than 400 feet, so 400 feet maximum. Operators pass a test and can show that to uh, law enforcement or FAA upon request, so you're going to need to have that with you. And last, your aircraft's gonna to have to be registered with the FAA, which is again a requirement that's been in place now for a couple of months. So that is it in a nutshell. Again, I'm gonna to try to keep it really basic for you here. And I will put down some links uh, to some of the sites that I mentioned down in the description here. And as things change, as we get a test, as we get uh, the uh, LANC open, so you can actually register more information that becomes available for this. Uh, even though in part 107, I will keep this up to date uh, for you. So go ahead, bookmark this page. Uh, come back to it. I'll give you the updates as I get them. So hopefully this video was of use to you. And uh, if so, of course, always subscribe, like, really appreciate it. And we'll keep all the links and everything in the description up to date for you. And again, until next time, good flying.